Welcome back to the Ed Block Courage Cast, live from Radio Road. Dave Stamon, Wayne Brooks will be joining me shortly, but I'm pleased to be joined now by Dr. Ryan Darcy. Darcy, yes. Darcy, who is a neuroscientist and a neurotechnology entrepreneur. And you guys are doing something pretty interesting this weekend. So I want to start right there. What what is it that you guys are working on right now that you're promoting? Well, we're here for Lee Steinberg's Brain Health. Hubex. We're doing a panel, but we're also actually looking into the concept of cognitive combine. So we take all this time with how, how we physically train, and we've got technology now that can actually allow you to think faster, be able to basically execute performance uh, more quickly. So thank you, Bayon. <laughs> when, did, when did that idea, you guys start talking about, hey, this is something we should do, this is something we think is going to be beneficial for people? You know, it's interesting because we, we stumbled into it because we were measuring athletes um, and looking at their cognitive processing speed and realizing that in, in a lot of cases that top drafts were actually thinking faster, anticipating a play. Um, mm -hmm. there's, you can actually measure brain layers. Effectively, they crystal ball the future, right? So they're, they're anticipating things and getting to, the, to where they need to be fast. And that's a brain wave. So we figured out that brain wave is telling us, you know, okay, these folks are really dialed in. Um, so we're looking at that a lot now and seeing some interesting differences. I was going to say, with all the all the concussion stuff the last couple of years, did you feel motivated, like, we want to try to get as far ahead of this as possible so that we're not seeing so much CTE and things like that in the player's post-career? Yeah, I think we took a really kind of a different perspective around concussion, the flip side of it being performance, mm -hmm. right? So. If it's an active player, uh, active players want to know how do I how do I how do I think faster? How can I train to think faster? And that actually takes them into a place where they're they're instead of worrying about whether or not a concussion happens, they have control. So we did get to that because we can measure the impacts of concussion and we can we can treat, and prevent it, and protect. So we did get to the performance angle because of what we did with concussion. But now the the narrative has changed. We're really talking about hey. Look, you do all this for physical, let's do this for your mind and for your cognitive and how fast you can. And is there is there also a certain part of it? We've got to go talk to athletes right. and we work on the neck. Yeah. How much of that is a focus for you guys of working the neck area to help alleviate some of this? Neck neck is definitely important. Um, we see there's differences, for example, between concussion rates with female athletes and male athletes. We, a lot of times, one of the things you can do quickly is neck, neck strengthening exercises to strengthen the neck, which will reduce the impact. So factors like that are key. And it's really around starting to know which factors are working and which ones aren't, which ones are moving the dial to, to allow an athlete to do, you know, compete, um, give it their all, and not have to worry necessarily about, you know, what, what's going to happen with concussion or what's going to happen after my career is over and I'm worried about all the gifts I took. And that was going to be the next part that I wanted to get touch on with you is the active career part. That's a big right. focus for you guys. Sure. How, what are some of the big steps that you guys take with athletes after their careers to try to help them? Yeah. So, you know, my main message is the world has changed quickly. So often you're like, oh, I hope medicine comes up with something and, you know, I've been waiting in. We're seeing this role in now. So for players who have sort of wrapped their career, and they're worried about the future. There's a lot of advances in technology now that allow us to treat and or recover if you have some chronic symptoms around, you know, that taking a bunch of hits and having sort of worried about concussion. We actually have ways now in, in the clinic um, to help recover any residual symptoms or that you might be experiencing. All right, Brian, I'm going to get you out of here on this because this is a fascinating subject. Um, and one very near here to myself, and anybody that's coached or been around athletes, where do you want this program to be in five years? Uh, what, like, what, what down the road, where are the next step you want to take this? Like, you know, it's, it's, I'm so glad you asked that question because uh, 10, 15 years ago, being an expert in the field, I really thought, and many of my kind of colleagues would say the same, this is a big problem. We're not necessarily going to crack this nut, but I can say now quite confidently that the way that we understand concussion, brain injury, the brain performance 
it's going to change fundamentally in five years for sure. Um, I'm hoping three. So the way things are going and how we manage our brain in three years, we should see it very different. All right. Well, Ryan, where can people go to learn more about what you guys are doing? Uh, we develop a scanner called the NeuroCatch Brain Scanner. So I would uh, check us out. You can Google it, NeuroCatch, uh, just as it sounds. Um, and there's a website. You can get to us there. All right. Awesome. Ryan, thank you for taking some time. Thank more you. from Radio Rowan. Awesome.